A guten Sommer, a great summer to everyone. It's Yisru Chag, Tov Shin Pei, Chag HaShavuos. And um, I want to share with you something that happened to me and my wife personally 36 years ago. <clears throat> we were newlyweds. We married in 1984. And we were married several months. We got married in February. And the Rebbe Fabrengt, Ashworth, as he did every year. And that was, uh, I believe, in June that year, May or June. Anyway, <clears throat> we lived a block away from 770. So after the Fabrengen, I, I said to my wife, I'll come home and uh, to be with her a few hours since, you know, she's by herself. Uh, and um, I'll go back for Kishel Bracha. Since Kishel Bracha takes three hours or so, I'll go back. The Fabrengen was a long Fabrengen. It started about 8.30, I believe, or so. It finished 1, 1.30 or so. And uh, I thought I'd go back like uh, 3.30 or so and, um, you know, still have time to get Kishel Bracha, the special uh, Havdala wine from the Rebbe's Cup, which is a big Bracha. A big blessing. And when I came back, it was all over. The Rebbe had finished giving out Kaisal Bracha. And I was very upset because we were scheduled to leave in early July to Marin County, California, where the Rebbe placed us as his shluchim, his emissaries in California. It's north of San Francisco across the Golden Gate Bridge, that section is called Marin County. So I went immediately to Rabbi Groner in the office uh, at night, probably about 3.30 three, 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 three at night, and I told him that uh, we're going on Shlichus, and normally the Rebbe would give a bottle of vodka uh, to those that are communal workers, that are Shluchim and Rabbonim and other uh, activities that were on behalf of Yiddishkeit. And this you would share with the people there. You'd make a fabrengen and you would share words of Taita and Hasidis. And uh, I didn't have it. And so it wasn't, it wasn't just for me personally, you know. It wasn't for me personally. It was for the people there. And the Rebbe wanted the shluchim, his emissaries, to do this. And his rabbonim to do this. So Rebbe Gronin said, said, let me see what I can do. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. Tomorrow is today, uh, today meaning Yisruchak. In the afternoon, I get a call from Rabbi Groner, who tells me that he went into the Rebbe and he told the Rebbe what, what happened. And the Rebbe took from his kois and he poured some into a little flesh, a little bottle of mashke, vodka, and he gave it to me and he said, give it to him. It should be for bracha and for his shlichus. And I don't know the exact words, I don't know, but that was the idea. And I remind myself of this story 36 years later, not just because this is the anniversary of when it happened, but for us to, to take a lesson. What's the lesson? The lesson of every piece of history and every story is that there is someone who is looking at after you, thinking about you. And of course, the Abish, the God Almighty, is our Father and He cares for us and He thinks about us and everything's exact and divine providence, etc. But when you identify with a Rebbe, with a Tzaddik, the Chassid can rest assured that the Tzaddik is thinking about him and the Tzaddik understands that sometimes we make mistakes, we, we, we make miscalculations, and we think we'll be in time to get the Kaisal Bracha and, and for good reasons to spend time with your new married wife and you don't want her to be by herself, etc. And meanwhile, you make a mistake and you miscalculate and you come late. So we must know there is never, it's never too late. In Yiddish, as in Farfalun, it's never too late. This is the general lesson that's brought in Hagyoyim Yoyim for Pesach Sheini. And the Rebbe wants every chassid of his man, woman, 
child to know this. That's one lesson that we could walk away with. Another important lesson is that it comes in continuation to Shavuos. Shavuos is man matan teiraseinu. It's very important for us to make real-time decisions, practical real-time decisions, to set times during the week where we learn, and not only learn, attend a shi'a or have a chavrusa, a study partner. If you can't get to a shi'a, get a study partner. And the Rebbe writes already in his letters to many people that it's advisable to do that because many times you'll say, what do I need a partner? I'll learn myself. Well, you end up sitting down at the table or the couch, you fall asleep, you get into a conversation, the phone rings, and you get busy, and there goes your learning. So this is a time to resolve, to make a seder in learning and kipshuta. It doesn't have, in a simple way. It doesn't have to be, you know, for a long time, fifteen minutes, a half an hour, depending on your time. But it should be a kfias benefish. The previous rebbe in his maimorim and his discourses talks about a kfias bisman, a set time. And then he talks about a kfias benefish. It's a soul commitment. The neshama commits. And this is very important. So uh, the idea of bringing a message to others requires you yourself to be inspired. If you're not inspired and you don't have what to share, it will reflect itself in the one that you're talking to. So may Hashem help that from this event that happened 36 years ago and it's alive now as it was then, there is no digression and diminishment of of this message. We should live with it. We should implement it. And as the Rebbe and the Friedrich Rebbe would say, besimcha bepnimius. And if you want it to be besimcha, if I'm sorry, if you want it to be bepnimius, you want it to be internalized, begin with simcha. Because simcha's poetics call akdorim, simcha shatters all convention and boundaries and limitations. And that itself opens up the inner heart, the pnimius. Chayim, may Hashem help, this should be done in a healthy way, and we should ultimately see Mashiach Tzitkenu, Bekarev, Mamish, very speedily, through the rebuilding of the Beis Amigdash, Bemheira, Biyomeinu, Mamish.